So I published a review of this bike, the Specialized Turbo Levo SL, last summer, a few months after I bought it. And I've gotten a lot of comments and questions on that video about, do I still enjoy the bike as much as I did when I first got it? How's the bike holding up? How's the range? How's the power? Um, and how do you like it compared to other bikes? So that's what I'm gonna answer for you today. So I've owned this bike now for, I think around nine months, and I've put quite a few miles on it. I'm guessing I've put around uh, three or 400, maybe 500 miles. It's hard, hard to be sure, because I always forget to track the ride on the Strava app. Uh, but anyway, I've, I've put a lot of rides on it, a lot of long rides, a lot of really mountainous rides. Um, I've even ridden it on the road in the winter when the roads are too yucky for me to want to ride my nice road bike. So I've really bonded with this bike. I've come to get to know it. I know how it handles. Um, I know kind of what can I can expect from the range and when I need to use the range extender thing. And so I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on the bike after nine months and tell you would I buy it again and do I recommend this over other e-bikes and even other mountain bikes. In April of 2020, Enduro Mountain Bike Magazine published a shootout article of the 15 best trail bikes of 2020. In the test were favorites such as the Santa Cruz Hightower, the Ibis Ritmo, Trek Fuel EX, YT Jeff C, and others. But they threw a huge curveball by including the Specialized Levo SL. They are not an e-bike publication and many readers cried foul. However, if you read the article, their conclusion was that the Levo SL was not a traditional e-bike, but a trail bike with a small lightweight motor. They raved about the bike and said it was the most fun in the entire group, with none of the traditional e-bike downsides but all of the upsides. They claimed that the bike represented the next logical step in trail bike riding. This logic resonated with me, in fact, so much so that I sold my Fuley X and went out and bought the Levo SL to see if this hype was actually true. The idea of taking the handling and feel of my favorite trail bikes and adding a small motor for climb seemed like a dream come true. With the Levo SL or bikes like it, you can take your preconceived notions of e-bikes and throw them out the window. This is not a bike that shuttles you up mountains, nor a bike for people to rent on the beach and take selfies, or a bike to commute to work. This is a trail bike for hardcore mountain bikers who are ready to take the next step in the evolution of riding. One of the elephants in the room with this bike is the cost. Uh, all e-bikes are expensive, but it, the Specialized are, are getting up there, especially for the SLs. So this is the Levo SL Comp Carbon. It was a $7,500 sticker price, and I think I got like a $500 discount, something like that. So it was definitely the most expensive bicycle, either road or mountain, that I'd ever purchased. The, the thing that motivated me to get this bike was uh, when I thought about the ways that I like to ride long rides in the mountains with sometimes even sections of road or long sections of fire road climbing, um, and the fact that I'm getting older, I have kids now, I put on a little bit of weight, and you know, time catches up with you. I just wanted a bike that would extend my range, that would allow me to ride further on the same rides that I was already doing with my traditional mountain bike. I wanted a bike that would handle really the same as what I was used to with a mountain bike, so I didn't want one of those 50 pound or 55 pound e-bikes that had a ton of power. So I went for the SL because it's got the smaller motor, the smaller battery, it's got much less weight, this bike is under 40 pounds, it's not that heavy. Uh, you can lift it up onto your racks, you can carry it over fences, you can treat it as you would kind of a traditional mountain bike with about six or eight extra pounds of weight. I wanted something in this suspension travel range, this has 150 front and rear, which is perfect for me. It's a good mix of um, sort of what I used to do in the past, which is a little bit more cross-country riding with some sort of more, uh, more tougher trails mixed in. So to get right to the point, I love this bike. This is definitely the best mountain bike I've ever had, whether you consider electrified or not. And the reasons for that are as follows. Uh, it allows me to ride faster and further, but it's the same experience that I always enjoyed with my traditional mountain bikes. So a typical ride for me is probably 10 to 20 miles. It has a lot of elevation change because I live here in the mountains. Um, it has a lot of single track, but it also has a lot of fire road. And what this bike has opened up for me is that I can get in more trails in the time that I have to ride. So let's say I have maybe an hour to ride after work. Well, I can ride further with this because I can zip back up the fire road faster and maybe get another loop of single track done on the downhill before I run out of time and have to get home. So that's a great thing. I also like how it, it just saves my energy a little bit. So on those longer climbs, um, there's two ways you can look at it. One, it helps you save your energy a little bit, but two, it also allows you to climb faster. So I can put in the same amount of effort 
uh, work at the same heart rate and get the same workout that I would on a normal mountain bike climbing. But if I put that power into this, I'm just going, you know, 50% faster, 70% faster, whatever that might be. It allows you to get more wind in your face. It feels a little bit less like a suffer fest. And I don't consider it, you know, people say it's cheating or all those things. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think this is just the evolution of mountain biking. And there's no denying that this is the direction we're going in. Let's talk about sort of how the components have held up. So it's got the SRAM NX uh, Eagle drivetrain, which is awesome, it's great. It's got the Fox 34 Rhythm Fork, which is, I think, just okay. Some people might wanna upgrade the fork. I'm fine with the 34 fork. Um, I'm not a super aggressive downhill rider, so I don't need to change it to a Fox 36. Um, the Raval uh, wheels have held up really well. Uh, really good wheel set, happy with those. They're not too heavy. Uh, the rear shock has, has been fine, uh, no issues there. Um, talking about, you know, the seat post is an X-Fusion uh, dropper, which I was kind of like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to like that, but you know what? It's fine. It works just fine. Uh, Specialized has really good seats. The, the saddle on this bike is really good. Um, in terms of the handlebars, they're alloy, but they're, they're good. The stem is nice and short. The bars are nice and wide. Um, really, really out of the box, this bike is ready to go. They really figured out the componentry really, really well. Um, one of the usual complaints I have about mountain bikes these days is that the, the so-called lockout or the compression adjustment here on the shock doesn't really lock you out totally. So if you really want to hammer on a climb, kind of like a road biker would, you kind of still get a little bit of pedal bob in the back, but that's true of all shocks on mountain bikes these days. Um, the front fork does have more of an actual lockout if you twist this all the way. I'm still on the stock tires that the bike came with. It's a specialized butcher up front and a specialized uh, eliminator in the back. I think they're really great tires. Specialized does a great job with, uh, with their tires. Uh, and if you just, in case you think I'm some specialized fanboy or something, I'm not. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not affiliated with them. And actually, this is the first specialized bike that I've bought new. So, so let's talk about the electrification and the motor and the battery for a minute, because I'm sure you're wondering about that. We'll have other videos on the range and going into more depth on that and testing how far you can go. But the range is largely dependent on how much climbing you do and what setting you have it in. So you can set the, uh, with a specialized app, you can change the power settings. It gives you three different power settings that you click up here on the handlebar, which is really easy to use and I love it. But you can tune in how much power you want for each. So I have it, the first setting at like 30%, the second setting I think at 60%, and the third setting at 100%, which is they call like turbo mode, right? So if you ride in the turbo motor 100% all the time, you're gonna go through more battery, obviously that makes sense. I find that I can do around, I can do around 2,500 feet of vertical elevation gain before my battery starts getting low. Um, and that's if I'm really using a lot of juice and running it in turbo mode to get up the hills as fast as I can. If you're in more rolling terrain or more flatter terrain, uh, you can go, uh, a lot more miles, but again, it's not really about miles. It's more about the vertical elevation feet that you're climbing. Think about in your car. I mean, when you drive your car on a flat highway, you can get 30 miles a gallon. When you start going up a mountain, you get like 10 miles a gallon. It's the same deal with a bicycle. It takes more energy to go uphill. Uh, so on flat terrain, you can get a very long range out of it. Uh, on in hilly terrain, uh, you can still do like a three hour ride uh, with maybe two to 3,000 feet of elevation gain just with the inside battery. Now, if you add the battery extender pack, which I do have, and I do recommend getting, although it's kind of pricey, you add on 50% to whatever that range is. So it's nice for those super long rides where you're really gonna do an epic ride and you wanna ride like 40 miles or something like that. You can have that battery extender pack that replaces the water bottle here, and you can go a lot further. So in short, this bike really has been kind of a game changer for me in terms of how I look at my mountain biking. It's the same sport that I've always loved, except now I've got a little better boost. It's like my legs are just 50% stronger than they were before. Uh, in my opinion, there's really no downsides to it except the cost and a little bit more weight. Uh, a lot of people like to hate on e-bikes and say it's cheating or get off the trails or whatever. I, I don't agree with that at all. And I think bikes like this Levo SL with a smaller motor and smaller battery and less weight uh, do a better job of sort of connecting you to that mountain biking experience that you might be used to if you're a hardcore rider. Um, a long time rider like I am, and doesn't feel like a totally different experience than sort of those full power e-bikes. So just if you, if you don't know, the, the, bike, the SL and bikes like it, they'll double your pedaling power, whereas a traditional electric mountain bike will do four times your pedaling power. So this is a lot less powerful, but that's what I wanted. I didn't want something that felt like super boosted going up the hill. I still wanna work, I still wanna get a great workout uh, because that's, that's important to me. Uh, and so this was the perfect compromise. Um, do I have any regrets about buying this bike? No, none. Uh, I wish it was maybe like blue or a different color. I'm not a huge 
fan of like black bikes. It looks good, but I kind of like to have color, so I would have preferred something different, but this was the only color I could get. That's not really a complaint about the bike, just something that I would say. Uh, really no complaints whatsoever about any part of this bike. I, I haven't done any changes to it. I haven't felt the need to. I do run uh, Shimano clip-in pedals because I'm a nerd, I'm a road biker. I just like to be clipped in. I know a lot of hardcore mountain bikers will poo-poo that. Uh, but no, I have no complaints about it, no regrets about it. Uh, I think it was worth the money uh, when you look at other bikes that are available out there, uh, especially considering how lightweight this bike is and how high performing it is and how much it feels like a traditional mountain bike, which is what I wanted. I sold my regular traditional mountain bikes in order to fund this purchase and I have no regrets. I really have no, uh, no desire to go back to riding a bike without a motor uh, for mountain biking simply because this is just mountain biking 2.0. It's just an amplified version of it which allows me to ride faster and further and enjoy the trails more in the time that I have. So I really don't see a reason to go back to a bike without a battery, but that's just me and your mileage may vary. Now please stay tuned because I'm going to have a lot more content on the specialized uh, Turbo Levo SL and mountain bikes in general and biking in general. I'm also going to publish two videos, one on five ways electric bikes are better than normal bikes and five ways electric bikes are also worse than normal bikes because there's two sides to the story, right? You get more weight, more complication, more cost, potential issues with other trail users in terms of going too fast. So there's a lot of things to consider there. So we'll have videos on that. So please stay tuned, please subscribe. And if you found this useful, please hit the thumbs up. It really helps me out. So yeah, in short, no regrets on this. If you're thinking of getting one, I really highly recommend it. I bought it pretty much when it first came out as an early adopter and I haven't seen any downsides to it. Um, so anyway, again, hope this was useful. Uh, ride safe, we'll see you out on the trails and we'll see you on the next video.